Hi there, my name is Ricardo Anguiano. I am a technical marketing engineer working for Mentor Graphics. I'm here at ARM TechCon 2016 in Santa Clara. Mentor Graphics is well known in the EDA space. Uh, in fact, we were responsible for the creation of the industry um, way back in the early 80s. Now, we've been in embedded systems for 20 years at this point. So this 20 year... 20 years in embedded systems right here. So what have you been doing for 20 years? For 20 years, we've been enabling uh, developers with infrastructure like uh, development tools, uh, debug workflows, and runtimes like our Nucleus RTOS and our Mentor Embedded Linux offering. So here you do have some. You have a demo. What do you do here? That's right. So our team built this case, this cabinet, and strung together a six by six grid of NXP K64 Freedom boards with touchscreens uh, on the front side, all networked together uh, through this switch. And then the controller, the game controller, is this IMX6, also an NXP part. So all of this runs our Nucleus real-time operating system. Uh, the game controller is uh, driving the touchscreen that's on the front of this, the large touchscreen, 13-inch. And then each of these has a touchscreen as well, and those also run our Nucleus RTOS. You say our Nucleus operating system. That's right, yes. Yours. That's right. So Nucleus is a proprietary commercial real-time operating system sold by Mentor Graphics. Let's go around here and check uh, what is this game about. So this game is a memory game. If you uh, follow me around this way, you get a chance to see uh, how this game works. If we reset it, you see our big 20th anniversary logo here. And then if I hit start, you get to see all of the tiles. For just a few seconds, you're supposed to memorize them in your head. And then when they go blank, you're supposed to play the game. And high scores end up here, and uh, we Whoa. win prizes. Nice. So uh, your score is perfect or 100% or what? No, unfortunately not. Has anybody done that? Um, I, the, the high score is not that bad, yeah. Has there been any like perfect scores? I don't think we have had perfect scores. Yeah, right, not yet. Yeah, not yet. Okay, I'll not do yet. it after, just after the video. Okay. And then over there. Yeah. So if you follow me around one more time, we're gonna come over here to where Larry is. And so this is our industrial automation mock-up. Uh, we're featuring our safety critical um, applications here. So, so you can see the robot here in the video. If you if you keep uh, zooming this way, you can see there's an opening here where I can break the plane, and uh, and the sensor will realize that I've uh, I've broken the plane. If we come over to the control surface here, you can see the alarm status is on. That indicates that that something has ended up in the safety zone, uh, and so the robot won't operate at this point. So if I reset the robot or the uh, the safety system, I can come over here, operate the. Uh, the robot, and now you can see the, the robot in operation. Right. And so, if I get in here, oops, oops, uh, I got too close. You broke the, uh, yeah, yeah, you broke the plane here, and so the alarm status is on, so the robot stopped moving because of that. And the, 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 the rationale here is that we have two different uh, operating systems running at the same time. One of these is involved with uh, process control. The other one is responsible for safety. So we can actually crash uh, the system here. If I press the crash button, everything on the left side of that screen will crash, but the safety system will continue uh, to operate. And so it's still showing uh, that we've had a violation uh, until we uh, reset the system. So is Nucleus plus Safety OS, or how do you call it? Yeah, so we have two versions of Nucleus. One is our, our regular standard Nucleus that we've used uh, for many years now. Uh, it's very mature, RTOS. The, the newer uh, product there is called Nucleus Safety Cert. This is a safety certifiable uh, real-time operating system for safety critical applications. And this is 100% uh, secure? Oh, 100% secure, that's a long conversation. Security is about risk reduction and mitigation adhering to practices and standards, doing things like not shipping default passwords, for example. There's there's a lot of things you can do to raise the bar, but perfect security, uh, even though I work in marketing, I'm never going to claim that we have perfect security. I'm never going to claim that. Neither does What if you here. get it at some point? What if some of these guys invent it? You would be the first to hear about it, and okay. I'm not going to tell you we have that today. Yeah. Okay. It's because uh, there was uh, earlier today, there was a keynote where quite cool, a guy was hacking all the cars. So this car, if it's running your system, is not going to get hacked? Um, we, we hope not. Um, I know that doesn't sound very confidence inspiring, <laughs> but I mean, seriously, security is a really tricky subject to get right. There's so many pieces from secure boot through, um, you know, vulnerability, uh, patches later down the line, um, through the process that is used to create the software. So there's a lot of things that you can do to make it more secure, but I don't think anyone here at this show 
claims to have perfect security. They all have security enabling technologies, uh, just like we do. Um, does that? Do you work with Embed at all, or is this an alternative to Embed? What you're doing? Um, we work with Embed. Yeah. So Embed is a really clean. Uh, an easy way to load executables into the uh, onto the board and then connect into their embed uh, ecosystem. So there's nothing that prevents us from using Nucleus in that same ecosystem as well. What are we looking at over here? There's, uh, there's some medical stuff. What is this? That is a, uh, a Xilinx uh, MP SOC board. This is one of their ultra scale um, it's just uh, ARM. Platforms, it is ARM. Uh, it's ARM plus FPGAs, right? So this is the Xilinx Zinc uh, line. And so what we're showing here is just a demonstration of an early engineering prototype with uh, our uh, Android port on top of it. And what's over there? Um, this right here is uh, a product made by Cepheid. Yep. Cepheid is a partner of ours. They've built this uh, system using Mentor Embedded Linux. Uh, this is an early... Uh, or I guess let's late stage prototype. Um, if, if you'd like to yeah. describe it and, so, and right. so my name is Fong Chow. I represent Safiid. Um, I'm a business solutions manager for Safiid. I'm here because we partner with uh, the mentor team here to uh, and use their um, the better Linux OS in our products. So this is a late stage. So you have it in there? Yeah, inside the hardware. So what kind of uh, hardware do you have in there? So this is uh, a molecular diagnostic uh, instrument. Okay, so we can run. Uh, different tests in the field on the go. This is designed to be ultra portable. There is no cables connected to it. It's currently powered on. It is paired to a, uh, a phone. In this case, we are using a uh, Nexus 6P uh, Google phone. Any phone would work? Uh, no, uh, we, we are developing for this phone specifically. We have our own app deployed onto the, the phone. It uses a lot of uh, performance. You need to process a bunch uh, of stuff? No, the processing takes place in the instrument itself, yeah. actually. The uh, phone is uh, basically loaded with an app and a uh, software that would lock down the phone's feature. So all the user would have access to is our app to run the, uh, the instrument uh, and the tech support app, which is basically a WebEx. So we can see what's going on on the So it's a special, uh, special uh, image of Android that just has your stuff only. It's, it's straight up, uh, right now it's running uh, Marshmallow, actually. Right. So nothing special. Uh, how about, uh, what is that stuff? So these guys are the cartridges. So when I say we can run a test, uh, we can run Ebola, testing for Ebola. We can test for HIV, we can test for flu. These, this is uh, called our cartridge. Inside the cartridge, we have the chemistry. Obviously, this is an empty one, but if it's a real cartridge, we'll have chemistry, we'll have reagents, we have beads that would, uh, when you apply the sample, in, when you place the sample in the cartridge, and you load the cartridge into the instrument, it's gonna process, it's gonna uh, analyze the, the, the chemistry and provide a result. Uh, and then send that result to the phone. Now, is that like a huge uh, lab that it, does the same stuff? Exactly. So instead of having a huge lab space with an instrument that's about the size of this bench, we are now looking at a footprint of this big, all right, to run one test. And Zika. And are you Zika, solve that? that we are working on that. The bio team is, is investigating that right now. Because uh, people are worried about that. Absolutely. So we are, we've got a team looking into that uh, currently. Um, the way this product would be sold is when we launch, it would come one phone with one instrument, and then the customer can buy additional up to three more for a total of four instruments to be paired with one phone. And is this approved by all the medical uh, governments and stuff? We are going staff? into a, a clinical trial in 2017 Q3. After that, we'll get our clearance and approvals, and then we'll launch commercially. Can you speed it up? Uh, can you have it ready like Q1? No, we, no, it has to go through the test, the clinical trial, go, yeah. right? Because this is a medical device product. Okay. Um, it's The yes. way they're communicating is two modes. One is through Wi-Fi. So if you are in a, uh, cl uh, a small hospital, you can use the hospital's Wi-Fi to connect the instrument and the phone to that Wi-Fi. If you do not have Wi-Fi, we provide a global SIM, uh, such as in a rural area, like in Kenya and South Africa, you don't have internet, you don't have Wi-Fi. We provide a, gl a global SIM. How's it been to work with uh, Mental Graphics on this? It's been great. They've been supportive. Uh, it's a great partnership. Um, everything's going great so far. It's going to yeah. be awesome at Mental Graphics to do cool projects like this, right? Absolutely. To work on all kinds of uh, uh, special projects. We get, I get pulled into uh, automotive projects, general embedded projects, uh, projects in a number of different verticals. And we're really excited. It's not a casino, but uh, I'm just saying, it, it's kind of like a casino thing. It is, uh, and I can make it a little bit more casino-like here. 
Okay. Let's see if I can. Oh, you can you can cheat the results? No, 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 no. <laughs> In fact, I think that this ran out of batteries. No, I can change okay. the color of the lighting. Nice. I was going to make it more more casino like. But to answer your question, I do get a chance to work on a lot of different uh, projects with a lot of uh, very talented teams. Um, we're really excited to have Cepheid as a partner. Uh, we don't make medical devices, but we enable uh, things like uh, what the, the the product the Cepheid is building today. And how many people are Mentor Graphics, and where are you based? Uh, Mentor Graphics is based out of Wilsonville, Oregon. That's about 25 minutes south of Portland. We were founded in 1981, publicly traded. We're, a headcount is somewhere north of 5,000 people. 